All right, what's going on you guys? I wanna show you a drill that I used to work that really helped me get inside on long range fighters because a lot of the times you have a long range fighter who's actually applying a lot of pressure. They're not always on the run on the outside. Just look at Tommy Hearns, look at Kelly Pavlik. Kelly Pavlik is a good long range pressure fighter. They used to be right up in your face, pressuring you regardless. And once you made your move to go at them, they would spring out like this, create a lot of space. And what I see is a lot of beginner pressure fighters quit early on their attack. So they'll sort of go like that with their quick attack and the long range fighters out, bang, already banging them. They'll quit a little bit early. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to just run down with a whole bunch of punches because you'll get caught. You'll be open the whole way and you'll get caught. Now this drill that works for that, I call it the end to end drill, but you can call it whatever you want. That's just a name that I gave it. And what I want to do is I want to work from one end of the ring or one end of my space, whatever space I got, you know, about the width of a ring, or you can go diagonally along the ring. And I want to continue to apply pressure and head movement and pressure and head movement until I take my opponent all the way to the ropes. I don't want just a jab, slip, hook, or one, two, slip, two, not just a combo. Because when they take off, I'm not gonna catch them. I'm not gonna be there. I've gotta take them all the way, all the way to the ropes. Let me break it down for you slowly. And really the key is to mix in your own flow slowly and steadily, and then you just build up the speed on your own. The key is to just work the drill. It's not about the specifics or the details. It's just to get the right mentality to know that you've gotta apply pressure elusively all the way to the end until you got that fighter right where you want them. All right, so let's start right here. I'm gonna go, let's say, to the wall right there. I can start off slow with simple combos and techniques. Jab, slip, hook, cross, slip, cross, hook, cross, hook, slip, body shot. And then I'm kinda of already there. What I've done is applied punches to give them something to worry about, but also moving my head in between in case they're firing back. It's not just enough to go like that, then you leave yourself open. Plus, it's hard to cover distance always punching, but moving the head together, you can cover that ground. So then I would go back the other way. It doesn't really matter what the details are. Okay, I'm punching and moving my head. Here I go again. Okay, I'm taking my opponent all the way to the ropes, all the way to the edge. I would recommend no more than three, four punches. One punches, two punches before you move your head. And when you move your head, you wanna put your feet and your head movement together. Okay, so I go back this way. All right, just one example. It doesn't really matter exactly what I'm doing because you won't know what you need to do until you're in front of that opponent, what adjustments you need to make. But I'm moving my head and I'm punching and I'm pressuring them and I'm not quitting. I'm not going like this, oh, they're gone, or oh. You know, you often think it's too late, right, once they take off, but you can still keep moving in on them. You move your head and you work and you keep pressuring them. So here I go and you just go back and forth for the round. And then you go again. Okay, and you cover that ground. Okay, you move your head. Okay, you mix it up. Okay, moving that head as I work and continue to cover ground. Simple and straightforward drill but very much a game changer in your mindset. If you are new and a beginner, or you have a hard time hunting down that long range fighter. Often they're pressuring you and then they move up. Okay, you have to be able to avoid shots and still apply pressure. If you can't trap them along the ropes or on the outside, they're pressuring you, it's gonna be a very tough night. Unless you're super fast, unless you're like Pernell Whitaker or Pacquiao, you got the foot speed and the in and out movement. 
But for most of us, right, who are shorter range, it's not going to be that easy. You need to apply the pressure. You need to keep going. You need to move the head. You need to throw again. You need to take them all the way, right, so there's no more room, or they have to turn, or they have to battle you. They have to deal with you. Working this drill is not only going to build up the know-how and the flow, but the conditioning. Build up the conditioning. And that's 90% of it right there. It's how we train, right? It's not necessarily what we know, but how we train, how we apply what we know through the training so it's there for you. It's there for you when you need it. It's not just something that you know you do it once and it's over. You work it and you work it until it's built into you. Now, if you like this video and the content, you are definitely going to like the membership on this channel. That's the join button up above, links down below, especially the head movement training camp. That's at level four boxing training camps for those of you who have some experience with boxing but really want to challenge yourself and condition yourself. That's a five-day program and I have a bunch of five-day and three-day programs in there where we work the knowledge and then we train it. So we actually really go through the whole thing. It's like me and you together. If you're a beginner boxer, that's level three, beginner boxers portal. And I got some other stuff, some other levels. You can check those out there. But all that definitely going to benefit you. Link down below, join button up above. All right, you guys. In the meantime, keep your hands up, chin down, eyes on the prize. Peace.